Court's consent to uh, engage in a colloquy until about uh, 340 with uh, Democrats and Republicans that, uh, that are going to show up down here. I think uh, uh, Senator Vitter, Senator Inhofe, Senator Whitehouse, Senator Manchin, and, and we, may have, uh, we may have others uh, that, uh, that are here. So um, I, I see uh, uh, my good friend Senator Inhofe is here. Um, Senator Inhofe, we, we uh, were now beginning, and uh, Senator Whitehouse is here. Uh, so if you would like to, to jump in with your statement, uh, that would be great at this point. We have Let me up ask to first, uh, is there an objection to the unanimous yeah. consent request? Please, yeah. Without objection. Thank you. Chairman. Uh, All right. Thank you very much. Let me uh, first mention that you don't see many things around this chamber that are truly bipartisan. And you're about to hear about one now. And I have to give credit to uh, the senator from New Mexico and the great job that he has done in making this a, a possibility that we're even talking about this now. Uh, I am very honored to be the chairman of the committee called the Environment and Public Works Committee. And we do a lot of significant things around uh, in that committee. Uh, we just had passed out a, the... Uh, arguably the second most significant bill of the year, which would be the highway reauthorization bill and, and others. So it's a very busy, busy committee. However, the thing that we're concerned about today and I want to talk about a little bit is, uh, is the bill that we are, are, have been working on for a long period of time. We had a, a great member, uh, Frank Lautenberg of this, uh, of, of this, uh, of the Senate, for a number of years, he and I became good friends back when uh, on this committee when Democrats were a, for eight years were the majority party. And prior to do that, to that uh, we were a majority for a long time. And during that time frame, uh, Frank Lautenberg and I became good friends. We had some things in common people were not aware of. And that is we both came from the corporate world where we were uh, involved in in, uh, in doing uh, things together and looking at things through a corporate mind. But on this bill that we're talking about now, it's one that we're enjoying 60 co-sponsors. I want to mention that Bonnie Lautenberg is in the gallery today. She uh, has been so cooperative. If you could uh, single out one legacy of the great Frank Lautenberg, it'd be this bill. I can remember uh, calling up Bonnie and asking if she'd be willing to come and testify before the committee. This is some time ago, and she was uh, more enthusiastic than uh, than I really expected that she that she would be, and she's been a big help also. So, uh, anyway, uh, we have something really good that is going on. It's great to see so many of my colleagues excited about Tosca reform, uh, and specifically the Lawton bill, Lautenberg bill, which now has overwhelming support on both sides of the aisle. For a long time, we've been very focused, and rightfully so, on the public health and environment, ben environmental benefits of reforming this 39-year-old failed law. I know that a lot of my friends across the aisle who are here to, uh, will continue talking about that today, uh, so I wanted to take my time on the floor to tell you some of the benefits of Tosca reform that you might not be aware of. From a Republican perspective, Tosca reform, in addition to providing greater protections for families in my state of Oklahoma and the rest of the country, can play a pivotal role in boosting our economy, creating well-paying American jobs, and creating regulatory certainty for businesses not only in the United States but across the world. Today, the U.S. chemical industry is experiencing a resurgence nobody had ever predicted. For years, the chemical manufacturing has been moving its way out of this country, reallocating in places, uh, locating in places like China, Saudi Arabia, uh, South America. And one of the reasons for this is that, that we had this antiquated uh, bill, uh, the law on the books, that made it very difficult for them to do and operate here in the United States. So. Uh, it was, uh, we kind of got used to this. Everyone was leaving the United States because of that. Now they're coming back. The interesting thing is there are two reasons I'm going to uh, mention to you in a minute why they're coming back and what it means to us economically. Well, the last few years, one thing has completely flipped the idea 
on its head that, that we were not going to be able to change the laws that are regulating the, the chemical industry. Natural gas liquids are the primary feedstock uh, for chemical manufacturing in the United States. And due to the shale boom or the shale revolution, we're very sensitive to that in my state of Oklahoma, natural gas production from companies like Continental Resources, Devon, uh, Chesapeake Energy, all in my home state of Oklahoma, manufacturers have an abundant and reliable source of natural gas for decades to come. Now this provides the stability and certainty uh, that manufacturers need to once again make major investments in the United States. And there's no better example of an industry reinvesting in this country because of our energy revolution uh, than the uh, chemical industry. As of this June, the chemical industry has announced 238 investment projects valued at $145 billion. Let me repeat that, $145 billion in new capital investments in the United States of America by the chemical industry, in large part due to American natural gas production. This investment is predicated, uh, predicted to be responsible for over 700,000 new jobs, along with $293 billion in permanent new domestic economic output by 2023. And the benefits don't stop there. This investment is also predicted to lead to $21 billion in new federal, state, and local tax revenue in the next eight years, and will lower our trade deficit by increasing our exports by nearly uh, $30 billion by 2030. Now, right now, the U.S. chemical industry is capturing market fair share from uh, around the world, and all of those facilities that packed up and moved to China and moved to the Middle East and moved to, to uh, Western Europe are rushing back. You don't have to look any further than comments by folks like Anito Tajani, the European uh, industry uh, commissioner who said, and this is a quote, he said, when people choose whether to invest in Europe or the United States, what they think about most is the cost of energy. The loss of competitiveness is frightening. In North America, as, uh, as, as a whole, chemicals and plastics production is predicted to double in the next five years, while it falls by a, a, a third in Europe. In other words, it'll go down by a third in Europe at the same time it doubles in the next five years here in the United States. Now, some of you may be wondering what this has to do with Tosca reform, because I'm talking about the cheaper price of energy, the, the, the main stock for, um, for chemicals is natural gas. Well, uh, specifically the Lawton bill and what we're talking about today. Let me tell you, passing this bill and getting Tosca reform signed into law not only provides these domestic industries with one manageable national rule book so products can be manufactured and distributed in all 50 states consistently, it also provides necessary regulatory certainty, the lack of which could be the one thing to drive this much needed economic uh, investment. Now, moreover, today, global chemical manufacturing and use in the absence of a coherent and functioning United States chemical po uh, policy is dominated by a European system called REACH. Now, I won't get into uh, much detail uh, about the European regulatory system, but it is significantly more burdensome and costly than many of our businesses uh, can afford to deal with. And unfortunately, today is the, it is the global standard. Uh, what the, we benefit by enacting a meaningful U.S. chemical policy is setting our nation once again to be the world leader, not only in chemical manufacturing or manufacturing in general, but to set the global standard and how uh, chemicals should be managed. Well, you know, that's what we are, that's what we're talking about, that's what this is all about. So there are two things that are bringing this industry back to the United States. One is our, our plentiful and cheap natural gas, and the other is this legislation. Can you imagine people anticipating that the legislation is going to pass and making uh, corporate decisions, bringing back uh, uh, many, many jobs to the United States? So it's going to be a surge 
uh, in, uh, in economic benefit, and, and consequently, uh, right now, the, the price of natural gas, the main feedstock that goes into chemical manufacturing, is far cheaper in this country than it is in Europe. So I think we're looking at, I say to my good friend who has, has really carried this, this ball, uh, Senator Udall, that it's, it's great that those two things are happening at the same time. And uh, again, when I looked around at the, uh, at the press conference we had this morning, and we saw everyone ranging from the most liberal Democrats to the most conservative Republicans, that doesn't happen very often in Washington, D.C. And I think a lot of it is due to my good friend from New Mexico, who is, uh, along with uh, Senator Vitter, has been carrying this ball. With that, I would re uh, go ahead and, and, and vacate the floor and, and just ask for any comments. Chairman, 